Who will make the biggest steps to improve their records in the 2022 NFL season? We'll talk about that, Dan Snyder's situation, and Deshaun Watson's situation, all here on the Friday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, here with my co-host, your boy Q. It's going to be a fun episode. Let's get into it. You are Locked On NFL, your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On NFL Podcast. It's the Friday edition with Chris Carter and ya boy Q of Locked On Steelers and Locked On Raiders. We're bringing it to you. We weren't able to be together last week because I had some uh, wedding details to take care of, but I was on, I was out on vacay. But we're back at it. We're stronger than ever. Q, how you doing? I'm good. Did you get married? No, I I did not get married. One of my best friends, Harmon Singh Dio, got married. Congratulations to him and his his wonderful wife, Navi Yell. We had a great time celebrating them out in DC. But um, there's a lot there's been a lot going on in the NFL. We're gonna get to all the Deshaun Watson stuff and Dan Snyder stuff later in the show. But we, there was an interesting question, Q, that was posed on NFL.com. Um, and it was talking about who's going to make the biggest improvements or who's who's going to increase their wins by the most in the right. upcoming season. Jim Trotter on NFL.com wrote about this. Now, Jim Trotter ranked, before we give our predictions, we're each going to list the team that we think gets the most, improves their just wins by the team, most. Right? We're just doing one team, right? Just just one. I ain't putting okay. too much pressure on you. I know it's hard to no, think. And Cincinnati went to the, the Super Bowl, so I'm not picking Cincinnati to be more improved because they were in the Super Bowl <laughs> last year. I don't care what Bengal fans say. They were in the Super Bowl. I'm not going to say that they're going to be most improved. He says, look, look, watch out, man. They coming for you. Oh, I know. Like, they're like the beehive, man. They're worse than damn Beyonce fans. I respect them, but geez. <laughs> it, is a, it is a lot. Um, but all right, let's go over. I want to go over Tr Jim Trotter's top five, and then we're okay. each going to give our one to add on to this list. Okay. So at number five, he had the New York Jets with with an improvement of four wins, which would get them to an eight and nine record. Um, Ooh. I'm st right. I'm I'm still looking at that, and I'm thinking, man, like I get that the Jets have made a lot of additions. Yeah, they were aggressive in the draft, and I do like some of the th pieces that they've added. But I'm still not a Zach Wilson guy, and I still don't know if Robert Salas fixed enough of that organization to get that far, even that far. Yeah, I think that Zach Wilson is a big question still. I don't know if they're a four-game improvement. You know what I mean? I mean, if you go from having four wins a season to go, I don't know if they improve by four. I like the pieces that they brought in, of course. I think they're a couple years away from a four-year or a four-game improvement. So uh, I, can't, I can't sign up for that one. I think maybe a two-game improvement max. Okay, there you go. Um, I'm with you on that on, on that part. All right, number four. This is the one I thought was the most aggressive by Jim. He said a five win improvement from the Seattle Seahawks that Whoa. would jump them for, right, right. No Russell Wilson. They've got you know they they you know they're, they're going to either have Drew Locke or Geno Smith or whoever playing playing quarterback. He's saying they're going from seven and ten to twelve and five. That's a ludicrous speed jump. I ain't buying that. No, no, not if you got Drew Locke or Geno Smith uh, behind center. I'm not buying that. I respect the hell out of Pete Carroll as a head coach. I think he's got some really good players there in Seattle, no doubt about it. I like DK Metcalf, of course. I uh, like some pieces that are there. Jamal Adams I'm a fan of, but I don't see a five-game improvement. That's 12 wins, and you don't have a, a, a real deal quarterback unless they go and make a move for Baker Mayfield, who I believe is going to play better in – the year of his contract year where he knows he's playing for a contract, his back's against the wall. Unless they make that move, I still don't even see him winning 12 games, not even with Baker. I, that's a tough division as well. Now, nah, I, I, I can't sign up for that either. Sorry, Jim. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. All right. This is, the this is I think, the first one that I look at and I say I, I can kind of see this happening. Maybe. This is still a little aggressive, but he has the Jacksonville Jaguars who went 3-14 and 14 last year, improving by five yeah. wins. That's another 8-9 and nine wow. team. I can see Trevor Lawrence and Trevon Walker and all these pieces that they've been throwing together taking some steps up. I don't know about five wins. I still think that they would. Yeah. I, I, I I can see three or four, but getting to eight and nine with that crew, that would be a huge step 
uh, for uh, uh, for Doug Peterson. Um, and I get it. Also, you know, just you're taking over for Urban Meyer. Maybe yeah. that, that, that changes. That's worth two wins more. right there. <laughs> 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 so so like they're obviously gonna i do think they will do better this year i don't right. know what it's five wins but i can see them end it like if we re, we redid this list and just said okay these are the teams at the end of at the end of next season i could see the jacksonville jaguars making the top five i i just think that they only improved by a couple games uh i i think trevor lawrence has a lot to prove i think doug peterson is going to help him you know obviously he's a really good head coach you saw what he was able to do in philadelphia leading them to the super bowl I think he'll get the most out of Trevor Lawrence. My question is, is Trevor Lawrence really that guy? I know we've crowned him that guy since forever, but, I mean, you know, you are what you are in the league, and sometimes the the situation doesn't help you be that guy. I'm not sure if Trevor Lawrence is that guy. He's got a lot to prove this year. I think that they improve maybe by two wins at the most uh, based off the fact that Urban Meyer is no longer on the sideline and Doug Peterson is, but I'm not 100% sold on the money that they threw out to Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, and others is going to do a whole lot more than give you maybe two more wins. I feel you on that. Number two, Jim Trotter had the Detroit Lions going from 313 and one to adding five more wins. Now, I don't know if wow. you, right, right. We're being really aggressive here. I don't know if five if if all five of those wins come out of the loss column or one comes out of the tie column. So technically, right. I guess he'd be eight, eight, and one or <laughs> eight and nine. Um, but I I you know, I, I get it. There's excitement around. Dan Campbell getting his second season. I'm sorry, I still don't see the talent on this on, on this Lions team to make that kind of a jump. I mean, I, I, I if Jamison Williams can get back healthy, okay. I like Aiden Hutchinson. Uh, Jeff Okuda should be should be healthy. They signed Mike Hughes. There's there's some potential there, but I think they still got a ways to go before I see them. You know, being in a playoff picture type of race. Yeah, I agree, man. And look, every single one of these teams that we talked about so far, they all have questions as far as the quarterback goes. And I think Trevor Lawrence is the one that we probably feel the most confident is going to be that guy. But like I said before, he's got a lot of, a lot to prove. I think Jared Goff has a lot to prove as well. You know, I think that he's still, even though he's earned a lot of money in the league, I think he still has a long ways to go. And I'm not too sure if if they have the right pieces yet, that's going to give them five. I mean, five more wins is a lot, man. That's more than wow. doubling what they did a, a year ago. I mean, that's... Dan, Dan Campbell's like almost coach of the year if they get eight wins, right? I just I just don't see I don't see that happening yet. I do think that they're getting better, but they we got to remember the rest of the league is probably getting better as well. So you know, are they going to improve by five games? I don't think so. I mean, you, all right, Jim Trotter's number one team, and then we both give our our top teams. He has the Denver Broncos being the team that makes the highest climb. They were seven and ten last year. He has them going thirteen and four. Oh wow. Oh, wow. In the wow. AFC West, where you're going Man. to be dealing with the Chiefs, the Raiders, the Chargers. Yeah. It's going to be a bloodbath in that division. I'm sorry. I think the Broncos will take a step up with Russell Wilson. I can certainly see them being one of those teams that takes a step up and even makes the playoffs. I don't know if it's enough to compete with the rest of that division and, and put yourself in the conversation to win the division at the end of the year. I don't think any team in that division wins 13 games, to be 100% just, honest. Yeah, I mean, it's too much of a you know, Right. I cover the Raiders like a glove. Of course, the Chiefs have won the division for so many years in a row. Russell Wilson is really good, but they also have a first-year head coach in Nathaniel Hackett. So uh, I, I can't sign up that they're going to win 13 games. Will they get better? Sure. I think every team in the AFC West has gotten better. But to your point, I think every team is going to beat up on each other, and you're going to see some losses, some games. You're going to say, whoa, I didn't see that one coming, or wow, that was a big win. You know, just I just think it's going to shake out like that. I don't see any team in the AFC West winning 13 games. All right, now Q, here's here's your bold prediction time. Give okay. me one team that you would put at the top of your list of team that you expect to increase their wins. Oh and man, how many, wins, how many wins do they increase it by? Well, I'm not aggressive like Jim Trotter. Jim Trotter was very aggressive, and I'll give him credit for that. I mean, those are some bold predictions. I'm not that bold, you know. Scared money don't make money. I'm scared money. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm gonna roll with the fighting Matt rules. Uh, he's year three. I've preached it till. To anybody and everybody, anyone who will listen, I've said that Matt Rule is at his best in year three. They won five games in 2021, I believe. 
So I'm going to roll with they're going to three be three games better and they're going to win eight. And the reason I say that they're going to be three games better is not because Sam Darnold's all of a sudden going to find himself, but all of a sudden the Carolina Panthers are going to call the Cleveland Browns and make a move for Baker Mayfield. And Baker Mayfield is going to actually be able to have a really good season. His back's against the wall. Matt Rule's back's against the wall. They both need to win together. So I've been saying it for a while on this show. I think that those two would be a great pairing. So I'm going to give the Carolina Panthers three more wins. They get to eight. Baker Mayfield's the quarterback for at least this upcoming season. Matt Rule does not get fired like uh, like they think he is. He's the favorite to get fired first, uh, according to the folks in the desert. And that's not me, but that's according to the folks in the desert. Uh, they apparently think that Matt Rule's going to get fired first. So he's going to hold on to his job because Baker Mayfield's going to help save the day. So there you go. That's my bold prediction. What about you? So you said three more wins? Three more wins will give him eight, right? Yeah, eight and nine. Okay. I, I see that. I'm going with a team that was eight and nine last year in the Baltimore okay. Ravens. Ooh, wow. Are you getting I, aggressive I, is the question. I, I a little I'm, I'm not overly aggressive. Not like Jim. I'll say four games. I can see them going wow. 12 and 5, 12, 12 and 5, five this year. Okay. And, and the reason I say that is because is that a both, division winner? Potentially. I think that I think they're going to be wow. neck and neck with somebody and it's going to come down to tiebreakers. I think Ooh. it could be the Steelers or the Bengals. Uh, wow, I wouldn't okay. be surprised. I, I think this is going to be a three horse race. Uh, at the, I at think the you're going to be neck and neck with the Bengals, not the Steelers. I really but, respect the Bengals. I love what the Bengals <laughs> got going on. Cincinnati, do what you do. <laughs> oh, man, if only I had a hat, I would just put on a cap and just say, you are capping as you say that, sir. I know you're trying to, you're trying to appeal capping. to our Bengals. You are totally I capping, sir. I love Cincinnati. If if you're listening to this on Apple or Spotify or something, <laughs> you need to go to that point. I think it was like with a 10 minute, 11, 10, 30 minute mark when Q said that. Watch it on YouTube and look at his face as he does as he said that. Because you do, you could tell he was full of it. All right. But anyways, I I, I I don't I wouldn't be mad at anyone saying that the Bengals are gonna win the division again. I, I think that they, they totally could. But I have the Ravens being up in that conversation because they were so hurt up last year. Yeah, their cornerback room was destroyed, their running back room was destroyed, their yeah. linebackers, every, everybody was hurt. Now they got those guys back. Lamar Jackson's is, is gonna be playing. We know this is gonna happen now. They they went and got baby, they got some answers, you know, now and I also going back to what we said way back in April, actually May, excuse me, uh, way back in May when the NFL draft happened, uh, we were excited for what the, the what the Ravens did. Kyle Hamilton is going to be at their new their new yeah. ace at safety. Uh, T- Tyler Linderbaum, you know, can he get a start at center? How how long does it take David Ohabo to, to to get to get back? Travis Jones on the defensive line. There's going to be some interesting pieces there. I think this is going to be a young, hungry team in Baltimore who's ticked off from not doing well last year. And Lamar Jackson back at full strength will only help strengthen this team. So I have them go- going increasement, increasement, an increase of four wins, wow. giving them a twelve and five record. I think that they are they they are in the hunt to win the AFC north there i don't give it to them automatically because i do think there will be two teams at least in the double digit wins in the afc north when all is said and done this season there you have it those are our teams that we expect to improve the most we're gonna be back we're gonna talk about the deshaun watson situation because there's been some settlements so now the question is what's going to happen discipline wise there was an update on that that happened thursday we'll talk about that right here on the friday edition of the locked on nfl podcast but first we're going to talk to you guys about betonline.net betonline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting and stats and information find all the latest sports developments league reviews and news including the stanley cup finals that just concluded game four on wednesday it was an exciting overtime game q did you even watch the game yes man and i was angry i wanted tampa bay to tie things up yeah man. that was tough to find out Colorado won and they had too many men on the ice? <laughs> yeah, so you know, yeah. Anger, it's man, it's anger. It's I'm anger. angry. <laughs> you could, I could totally feel your anger. <laughs> I hope they see that on YouTube, too. <laughs> Anyways, if you want to learn more about the matchups and how to make money off the Stanley Cup Finals, go to BetOnline.net. They also do Major League Baseball, eSports, all, and, and a whole bunch of other opportunities for you to put your money down on some sports. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action when you visit BetOnline, where the game starts. Back here on the Locked On NFL podcast, I'm Chris Carter. He, he's your boy Q. 
cue this Deshaun Watson saga will not end, but it seems like it's at least turning some pages now. It's not just adding more people to the list. We're starting to see some developments here. Now, we know earlier in the week, 20 of the 24 official accusers had reached settlements with Deshaun Watson's camp, which, you know, said, OK, we may be a little bit closer to some actual decisions being made by the NFL. Well, there was some there were some meetings or I guess some talks that were going on between both sides, the NFL and uh, Deshaun Watson side and apparently both sides left at odds there were there, there were some disagreements there as far as how things should go and it, it's apparent to me Q that Deshaun Watson you know we took we talked about this last year right before the seat when, when this, all this stuff was breaking out you and I we, we were impressed by how Deshaun Watson's camp was not taking any settlements they said we're not settling for anything Deshaun never did anything wrong blah, 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 blah. but here we are in June of 2022 and lo and behold they're taking the settlements and you know some people are saying 10 games some people are saying a season some people are saying multiple seasons i'm not so sure about about, about what the punishment's going to be but it's clear now at the nfl i think they're swinging big if if uh, deshaun watson's side is pushing back yeah i agree i think it's going to be at least a season and i think that the nfl pa is going to definitely fight back and try to get that reduced but uh, i believe that it's it's going to be at least a season and i think it should be at least a season and i, I don't care that he didn't play at all last season that wasn't a suspension that was something that just didn't happen he still got paid he still did everything that he had yep. to do uh he was good to go he just didn't work you know what i mean so he uh, i i just don't see it man and i think that you know, he, he mentioned and you mentioned about the fact that he wasn't going to settle because he was going to clear his name. I think the more details and details and details that continue to roll out about what potentially and allegedly happened in these different massage rooms with these different masseuse, I think the details forced the settlement. I think the details I were agree. like, OK, hey, dude, look, we don't know what happened, but we know something happened. Right. You yeah. You just can't continue to make up so much stuff. And, I mean, I, I know and someone's going to tell me that, yeah, Q, they could all come up with this big story. And you're right. They could. I just don't see it happening. At some point where there's smoke, there's fire. And there is a whole lot of smoke. So I just think that there is something. We'll never know exactly what happened. But that's the reason why I think he started to settle these so fast. And we heard rumblings that, you know, he almost got those things settled uh, before the trade deadline last year. And, and Miami was going to take them. But. Uh, the owner said they got to get them all done. He couldn't get them all done. They had about four. Well, now you look up and they have about four. So, I mean, it's just it's a it's a weird situation. But as far as the penalties come and the and the suspensions, I do think that the NFL is going to go big. And I think they have to go big. If they don't, then there's going to be man, there's going to be people screaming oh, from the back. Man, yeah, mm -hmm. the backlash is going to be incredible. It's already been incredible with the two hundred thirty million dollars that Cleveland uh, gave Deshaun Watson fully guaranteed. This will be even bigger than that if they don't swing for the fences. I agree with that entirely. I've had a lot of NFL fans even tell me, like, Chris, like, this makes me – and then these coming from women, they're like, Chris, this makes me not want to watch the NFL. Like, right. you know, this this makes me concerned. Like, if if this dude can just get away with that, what are we even doing here? And I, I, I feel for that. I, I get that. Um, there were plenty there. Were, I know plenty of Steelers fans that were or people that used to be Steelers fans. And they were like, like, I'll root from the team from afar, but I can't, I'm not going to go see a game with Ben Roethlisberger there. That was, mm. you know, there, there's the, as much as it might not appear to that on the outside, there were a lot of people in Pittsburgh conflicted about, about, uh, about Ben Roethlisberger stay, staying on a team. This is now even bigger than, than that. When you look at how many, how many uh, uh, you know accusations are are talking about here? You know, uh, you know, Ben Roethlisberger had you know one incident after they won the Super Bowl in two thousand five, and another incident a few years later later after that. But both were you know just singular. There wasn't you know a long line of women right. saying, "Hey, you did this." Nor was there an HBO sports special that right. talked to those accusers. That didn't and help either. That didn't help Deshaun yep. at all. Yep, <laughs> it was those details. It was, yeah. and I, I watched it, and I'm like, as they're telling the details, my skin's crawling. I'm like, okay, yep, yep, yeah. nope, 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 can't do this. And, and not that it, I felt, not that I felt like, oh, he should be, they, they should go easy on him before then. But it just, it made me, it, 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 if you're a human being, you feel those women's pain, and you're like, man, okay, right. yeah, something, something's gotta, gotta happen here. And I do think that's what's happening here, along with, like you said, the NFL. They don't want to be looking like they're like they went light on this well, situation because they know the public backlash will be too much. I mean, they have to go hard on this one. I mean, they, they can't go throughout the course of the year and they can't have a breast cancer awareness month. They can't have a right. salute this month. They, they can't do all these things that are supposed to be like looking out for people and having their best interests and then having a guy that appears to be like a predator. 
Right. right. I mean, and just let him kind of skate through. And of course, we'll end up talking about Daniel Snyder coming up in the next segment. You can't get all up in arms about what's going on in Washington with Daniel Snyder and the congressional hearings without getting up in arms with this. I mean, these kind of go together. Right. I mean, they're they're hand in hand. I mean, there's there's issues in the workplace, you know, sexual, uh, you know, um, transgressions or whatever you want to yeah. call it, just bad situations yeah. going on in the workplace. And this isn't even in the workplace, but these are bad situations as well. I mean, everything ties together. So uh, the NFL, man, they've got to get this one right. There's not one of those, oops, we messed up. Let's try to do it again. You, you only have one opportunity to get it right. Meanwhile, back on the football side of things, what are the Browns even doing in this situation? Like what, like you can't get Baker Mayfield to play are they just stuck with Jacoby Brissett? Is that just what they're just going to have to live with until the NFL drops the shoe and then we figure out if it's 10 games, a whole season, two whole seasons or something? I mean, it's good. they're going to have to. They're going to have to. Baker Mayfield's not playing there, and I wouldn't right. either. If the if if I'm sitting there and I'm Baker Mayfield and that phone's ringing and I see it's the, it's the Cleveland Browns front office, I'm laughing at them. Like, hey, man, this is what you guys wanted. You chose this life. I got issues but he's got issues, right? You chose to have an adult <laughs> in the room. That's the adult you chose to have in the room. I don't ever think that Baker Mayfield's the most mature dude in the world, but I know that he doesn't have all these issues that he's being uh, accused of. I know he didn't go to 66 different, uh, you know, massages or massage parlors or whatever the situation was and go on Instagram and find all, find all these masseuses. I know he didn't do that. You know what I mean? Like, so that that is just one of those situations, man, that if and, and you know, it's funny. You talked about Lamar Jackson in segment number one as a as a guy that, you know, is going to help improve the Baltimore Ravens because he's going to be healthy. If I'm a Lamar Jackson or anyone else that's about to get a contract, I'd be like, hey, you see what they did over there? I ain't got no issues. I ain't right. done nothing. Nobody's accused me of nothing. So whatever he's got gone to run me my money, man. Give me 10 mil more. And we'll be good. We'll call it even. You know what I mean? Like. And my negotiations would be so easy because now Cleveland has made a precedent that, hey, it doesn't matter what kind of situation you have going on. If you could play, we're going to throw the money at you. So now if I'm a if I'm a, any other dude in the league, I'm like, hey, man, I'm squeaky clean. I'm good for your your team. I'm yep. a great citizen. I'm great for the league. I need to go ahead and let you run me my money. I feel you. I feel you. It's, it, and I think it's going to be crazy to see what goes on there with Cleveland. We'll keep you up to date with what happens with Deshaun Watson and what the actual punishment is on the Locked On NFL podcast. But we also got to talk about the other big situation that Cubes was talking about earlier, and that's Dan Snyder. He was supposed to appear before Congress. He didn't uh, appear in his with his subpoena. That is going to be a serious situation. We'll talk about what's going on there, what's the investigation about, and how serious is this situation. Will he finally be removed from the Washington Commanders franchise? All that and more right here on the Locked On NFL bell podcast Back here on the Friday edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. I'm Chris Carter. He's your boy Q, and we're talking about the NFL. And we're talking about Dan Snyder. And this was a rough situation for, you know, you know to, 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 to talk about for a lot of people because this has been an investigation that's been going on for quite some time. Deshaun Watson's thing has really been going on since what, like last year when he when it, when he started his holdout yeah. with the Texans, and then the, the the story started coming out. Dan Snyder's situation has been going on for a while. Uh, it's been there's been more stuff getting revealed with this investigation, including uh, sexual assault or sexual harassment, uh, you know, allegations even going as far back as 2009 uh, by former employees against Dan Snyder. Um, you know, I know the Washington cheerleaders have, you know, have have testified or provided a lot of evidence as far as what they were forced to do and how they were at times they were made to feel uncomfortable about situations and all the situations there. And it's just. Q, this this is this is nuts to me. Like you know, this is this is a this is a guy who he owns the team. Roger Goodell has said he said he said I can't I don't have the power to remove him as a as a, as an owner. That that's going to come from the power of the other owners. But I look at this Q and I'm like, man, this is another blemish on the on the on the entire NF on the entire NFL. And it's not coming from like an owner who's been known for making the NFL some amazing place. Right. Look, the deal about it is, you know, Roger Goodell, he was on trial or he was on the stand there at the right. congressional hearings and 
he earned his money. You know, as you mentioned, he works for the owners. So they're the ones that right. pay him. He makes about 42 million, maybe 45 million a year. And that's on the strength and the backs of the owners. So uh, he was on the stand. He did what he had to do. Uh, and as you mentioned, talked about, well, I, I don't have the power to remove him. He also answered some questions about, hey, I'm not the right guy to, to ask. You need to ask Daniel about that. And But he did everything he could. I thought that he actually answered the questions the best he could. Uh, got a little heated, got a little aggressive. But the thing about this is, man, I look at it and I say, at what point is it is it too much, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, at what point is it too much? You know, uh, we we mentioned the situation with Deshaun Watson, but we hear, you know, right now we're we're talking about like every sports channel. If you're, if I'm looking up at ESPN right now, and it's nothing but Title Nine. I mean, it's 50 yep. years of Title Nine. They're talking mm -hmm. about uh, women in sports and this, that, and the other. And it's like, how in the world can you fix your face to talk about you're trying to protect women, you're trying to elevate women, you're trying to put them in a position to succeed, this, that, and the other. And then you have a guy like this who's like the Teflon Don. This dude decided he was going to go to France on his yacht, sit there and drink whatever he wants to drink and talk about, I have work issues that uh, are, are, are going up against, you know, the same timing, so I can't, I can't be there. And so then they're going to subpoena him. So then he's going to show up. So what's he going to say? I plead the fifth? I mean, it's almost like, what has this dude done? What has this dude got on the rest of the owners where – they, they don't want to speak on them, right? I just I just don't get it. At some point, like, we all got the homeboy that is always in trouble, and you're like, man, damn it, that's just that dude getting in trouble again. And then you got to mm -hmm. go basically not bail him out of jail, but just get him out of a situation. Like, man, let me go pick this dude up. Homeboy's at this party starting some mess. I got to go get him. There, we all have that dude, and at some point, you got to look in your life and say, you know what? I can't take it no more. You know what I mean? You're, you're not worth the trouble, homeboy. Like, you're, you're, you're causing me too much grief. I can't do this. At what point do the owners say, Dan, I know you can't help yourself. Mm -hmm. I know you ain't got no no home training. But damn, man, come on. You you you're killing us here. Stop it. What is going on here? And at some point while they just get together and say, "Hey, look, like you said, Chris, he ain't doing nothing for us anyway." Right. It'd be different if if that was Bob Kraft. I mean, Bob Where Kraft had his own going? thing. Bob, Bob Kraft was caught up in a in a in a, in a you know, in his own parlor. Place. You know, right, right. In Masseuse Parlor that was yes. you know, had that had, you know, you know, women that were being they were a part of they're being trafficked there. Right. So that's he was gone. But you saw how there was kind of like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's Bob Kraft. We're gonna get we're gonna get we're gonna get past this. You know, if 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 this was a crown jewel of the NFL we're talking right. about, different story. But Washington and it has really not shouldn't been. be, but I understand why it would be, right? It shouldn't right. be, but I understand why it would be. Look right. what they no, did I, to Gary Richardson in, in, in Charlotte. Yeah. You know, there's a new owner of the Panthers for a reason. Yep. Because what happened with Jerry Richardson, and to his credit, he was like, hey, I'm not going to go ahead and put any more shame on this organization. I'm going to go ahead and sell the team. And he and did. It's not just shame. <laughs> right. I mean, Richardson really wasn't forced to do it. He just kind of did it because yeah. – because he should. I mean, that was the right decision. This guy has done nothing but put shame on the NFL. You know, protect the shield. Isn't that what they say? Got to protect the shield. There's no protection when it comes to, to Dan Snyder. I, I'm with you. I, Washington fans have been angry about Dan Snyder for just the how bad the organization has been run for years. It only makes sense if the NFL stepped in and said, look, we're angry about how you run the organization and how you're putting a blemish on, on, our, on our organization. I feel you entirely. Dan Snyder may have a whole lot of money. And who knows? Maybe Dan Snyder has some stuff on these guys. Like you said, what does he have on the guy? Maybe does he, he does because supposedly part of this investigation was, you know, they would take private jets to private islands where they'd get to do private stuff. And maybe some of the NFL owners were part of that, and they're like, mm, I don't want my laundry coming out in this, so I'm not going to say nothing. Or I'm not going to put this guy up against the fire. But – Come on, Q. Like I'm, I'm, I'm right John with Gruden you. At the club, they kick Gruden out the club because he and ain't think, no owner. And, and John Gruden, I think that's why John Gruden's like, now hold on a second. If you getting right. rid of me for emails, this is and not. And again, John Gruden deserved what he, he got. deserved it. He deserved yeah. it, right? But they deserved. But, they decided as a group that they were going to turn on him quick, fast, and in a hurry. And, and that was and that was John's point was whoa, 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 whoa. If you if I'm going, I'm taking right. everybody I can with me. And right. unfortunately for the NFL, there's a lot of people that they've been protecting. And Dan Snyder's just at the forefront. And I do wonder, Q, if part of the reason that they haven't collectively moved to get rid of him is because they're scared that if they did that and he responded the way John Gruden has with his money and his influence, maybe he 
bring maybe he's able to bring a lot more to the light and that makes things even worse and then you have a what instead of a spark instead of a, a simple case you've got a wildfire and your whole league is everyone's talking about that and deshaun watson and not this upcoming season with who's going to win the afc west well then you kick them all out the club you know what i mean if they're all dirty Kick them all out the club, and I know that's not going to happen. But at the same time, man, it's just – it to me, it's so bizarre, and that's why I get fired up about it. Like, at what point is this dude not worth the trouble, man? I mean, this guy is just I, – like I said, man, he's he, he, it's like he's the Teflon Don. You know, it's like he's untouchable. I agree. And he's it untouchable. doesn't make any sense to me. Like, what has he done that's so great that makes him the guy that nobody wants to touch and everyone just kind of turns their eye and says, oh, there's nothing to see over here. No, there's a lot to see over there. A lot to see. Yes, it does. I mean, I've heard people like Kimberly Martin, who's on ESPN NFL Live. She said she works as a reporter, a beat writer that covered the Washington football team. And she was told specifically, if you see Dan Snyder in the hallway, one, you call him Mr. Snyder. And two, you don't look him in, in his eye. You don't even look. You, you keep your head down. Wait, who tells a woman that? Who tells anyone that? If I if I walk by you and I say, what's up? And you're looking down. I'm thinking that something's wrong with me. Like, why can't this dude look right. at me? You know what I mean? I would right. want you to look at me, but he walks around like he's so Teflon that people can't even look at him in his face. Not Come on, look. man. Who are you? Uh, I, mean, I don't know. That kind I, of stuff just gets me fired up, man. Hey, man. Our Rooney's literally said hi to me, like when I walked by. Hey, so, that's like, what I'm so, saying. I don't. That, that that it drives me. It's it's so crazy because I'm so used to the Rooney family in Pittsburgh, and when I see stuff like that, I mean, and, yeah. and there's plenty of owners in the NFL that 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 have that, that are like very that. pleasant and they're cool. You know, the Mara family, but Dan Snyder again. I don't get what he has that's protecting him. Uh, who knows? Maybe something out of this com comes out of this that forces his hand to make a decision here. He pushed he pushed hard for years to not change Washington's team name, and now they're the commanders. Uh, so maybe he'll lose this battle too over time. But I just wonder what's going to be the trigger that makes that happen. We'll see as how things play out in court as well as in the public eye when it comes to Dan Snyder and his sexual assault investigation or sexual harassment investigation excuse me but again there's a lot to talk about there with deshaun watson and that that it's just taking over the nfl news we're gonna we're gonna hopefully talk more actual football next week as we can get to some like lists and some more cap or no cap we got we do our jobs by talking about this stuff we more so enjoy talking about that other stuff but we would not be doing our jobs if we didn't at least get our opinions right. and get our thoughts together on some of these important topics because they're they're what rule the day right now in the NFL. So stick with us at the Locked On NFL podcast. We got a lot of other content coming your way down the line. We hope everyone is going to have a strong weekend. I, wherever it is, I hope it's not too hot and you get to go out and enjoy yourself and get some time chilling by a pool or something sitting on something nice. Q, what you got going on this weekend? Man, it's grind time, man. It's always grind time. That's what we do, man. We're about a month out from training camp, right? The NFL just released the dates for all the teams across the league. We're a little bit less than a month away from uh, rookies and veterans reporting, so I'm just kind of preparing myself, getting ready. Uh, in Las Vegas, it is pretty warm, uh, over 100 every single day, so, you know, we're just going to work it out, man. We just do what we do, but uh, you can find me on Twitter somewhere, hanging out somewhere great in Las Vegas. That that's just what I do. Hang <laughs> Yes, you'll find him on Twitter somewhere in Vegas. You can also find him on Twitter at your boy Q254 and find the Locked On Raiders podcast, just like you find the Locked On Steelers podcast, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, YouTube, and you can find all of them just like you find the Locked On NFL podcast. I'm Chris Carter, host of the Locked On Steelers podcast and co-host of the Friday edition of the Locked On NFL podcast with Q over here. You can find me. On, at Carter Critiques on Twitter. You can find my show just like you find all of our shows here on the Locked On NFL Podcast Network. We thanks for you for checking us out. Have a great weekend. Q and I will be back on your screen in your ears next Friday.